And yeah, we'll get started in just a few moments here. Like I said, we're gonna focus on the front of the hips today, on the quads. If you wanna find a pillow for a prop, I invite you to do so. You may use it, maybe two, just in case, especially if they're thinner pillows. If you have blocks, that's a great prop too. Hi, Bob. Hi, Kenny. Hi, Corin. Good to see you guys. Grab your waters. So to start today, um, I'd like us to start sitting up and then we'll get into a little bit more of a passive gravity induced stretch afterwards. So we're going to start by opening up the hip adductors, which are the inner thigh muscles. So we're going to start in what's called Baddha Konasana. It's called bound angle pose. So you can come to sit. You can, if you have a prop, you don't have to be sitting on that. Come to your mat. Bring the soles of your feet together. And then let your knees open like a book. You can hold on to the toes, kind of interlace your hands around them. And so if this is enough for you, I mean, especially even if your knees are like all the way up here and not exactly like if gravity isn't helping them to kind of fall open and if they feel really tight, if this is enough, then I just need you to sit here and breathe. If you want more sensation, you can always focus on your knees by pushing your knees down to the ground. And by extension, you also want to sit up when you do this. So you get tall, right? Because if you do that with your knees, sometimes you tend to hunch over and like extend your neck. So we don't want that, right? So we want to sit up nice and tall, with nice strong arms squeezing those toes and you're pushing the knees down. You can even give it a little bit more motion and do some little butterfly pumps there, whatever. Um, you can be in stillness and breathe into the sensations you're feeling or you can have a little bit of movement. And if you want even more, then you can link your breath to movement a little bit deeper here. You inhale to get really tall and then as you exhale, you pull with your arms lower the chest and imagine your belly button coming to your big toes and that will really liven up those hip adductors and those inner thigh muscles that i just mentioned so we're working on warming those up we're getting into the hip extensors as well internal rotators knee extensors a little bit of the chest and as well as shoulder elevators too so that's a whole lot of vocab um, of different muscle groups that we're working on. Mostly it's in the upper thigh area, all areas of it, the outer hip, the inner thigh, even the knee tendons are getting a nice stretch here. So if you have chosen to pull yourself down towards your feet, you can always release and inhale, rise back up, stacking the shoulders over the hips. And yeah, really just kind of trying to focus on the sensations, that, the different sensations that you can get by tapping into these muscle groups, first and foremost, especially if you've been sitting all day or if you took a really long walk or a hike. Yeah. So one thing that's really fun to, uh, to do and to get curious and to play with here is to play with the distance that your feet are away from your pelvis. So you can bring your feet in really, really close or you can bring your feet in farther away. So if you bring your feet farther away, you're going to have to reach for them more. Or if you have your feet in super close. You're not going to have to reach as far, right? But you still got to really maintain sitting up nice and tall. You want that nice flat back. And I'll turn to face the side here so you can see how flat my back actually is here. So the soles of your feet are together. Your knees open like a book as much as they can. And as soon as you start to feel those inner thighs really light up, then that's where you stop and you breathe, right? As soon as that sensation gets a little bit more intense than, than if you weren't stretching, right? You don't have to force yourself into feeling a very, very strong sensation. There's, it's the beginning of class. Take it easy. So that flat back that I was just talking about. So if you're inhaling to get nice and tall and then you bend the elbows and pull your chest down, you see how flat my back is as I'm going over toward my toes. You don't want any of this rounding business. You want to stay nice and flat through the whole back, even neck alignment. So not looking at the ground, but looking out straight at the wall in front of you. And I can feel this right in the tops of my shoulders, which are where those shoulder elevator muscles are that we just talked about, as well as in my chest. Because with the pulling action of your hands around your toes, that's what you're, um, instead of rounding through the shoulders, your chest is really getting a stretch because you're squeezing your shoulder blades together on your back, which causes your chest to stretch open, right? So that's what we're looking for here. And you can go ahead and shift your feet farther away or closer to your pelvis. 
and really just breathe. When I was sitting at the um, at the kitchen table today for a little bit because I was on you know the phone with unemployment for like three plus hours, so that was super fun today. And then I stood up finally, and I noticed that my hips in the front were so tight that I could feel it pulling on my big toe. It was the craziest sensation I've had in a while. So that was what inspired me to get into that today. So whether you've been walking too much or sitting too much, this is for you. So just being able to sit with these sensations that are coming up and breathing into them deeply in through the nose and then deeply out through the nose. If you are pulling yourself forward, you release and rise back up on the inhale. Relax those shoulders away from the ears. Inhale, get nice and tall to the crown of the head. Then exhale, pull yourself forward. Beautiful. And just keep breathing and just notice what parts, what areas of the leg compartment are lighting up for you. And as you breathe in through the nose, as you exhale, um, you should really be bringing some softness and some a little bit of relaxation to that area. So let's come out of this. You can release your toes. If you haven't already risen back up, you inhale to rise back up, stacking the shoulders over the hips. Go ahead and extend your legs nice and long. Feels very, very nice after that bound angle pose, right? That's what the Sanskrit stands for is bound angle pose. So now let's stretch out the legs. So you're going to flex through the feet, inhale the arms up to frame the head and then bow forward. Thank you, Thomas. It's good to see your name pop up. Thanks for tuning in. We're gonna focus on the quads today and the hips. So right now we just got out of that bound angle pose. If you wanna come into that for a couple of breaths, if you're just joining us, you're holding your toes, inhale tall and then bow forward. And then the counter stretch that we're doing for that is extending the legs nice and long on the mat. The feet are nice and flexed. Inhale, both arms up to frame the head and then exhale, bow forward. And this is the beginning of class. So you're not gonna, it's not gonna be very fun to do this seated forward fold at the beginning of class. So really focus on your breath and send the breath right down the backs of your legs, up into your back. Notice if you're feeling a tightness in your mid back. Um, so noticing the sensations that come up in the first couple of minutes of practice, or even just your own personal practice of sitting down and stretching, noticing where those sensations first pop up is a wonderful, it's like a forecast um, for how the rest of your yoga practice or your stretch is about to be. So for example, you're here in this pose. If you're feeling it um, at the backs of your knees, that means your hamstrings are probably gonna be a little bit tighter during practice. So it's gonna be really important to focus on hamstrings and really breathe and send breath there. If you're feeling this across the middle of your back as you're forward folding, reaching forward wherever your hands land on the legs. If you're, reaching, if you're feeling it in the uh, mid back, then that means your lats and your trapezius is probably really tight, which are two, um, those, the lats are a mid, back muscle that wrap around to the front of the humerus actually so it wraps right around and that muscle can make it really hard to breathe when it's tight um, or your trapezius which is the most superficial upper, upper back muscle super duper powerful um, and then the lower attachment is right on top of where the lats are resting in the mid back so some more anatomy for you if you have any questions about any of the terms or uh, feelings that you're feeling right now, you can always message me and we can talk about it and I can give you specific stretches to help with certain areas too. It's an open hotline. So you're still in the seated forward fold. Yes, I've been talking for a minute. Are you still breathing? Wherever your hands are, release them, let them fall to the sides on the floor, palms facing up and on an inhale, rise back up using the core to rise, stacking the shoulders over the hips. Go ahead and bring your legs out a little bit wider than hips distance and just windshield wiper them. You can even put your hands to your knees and help, excuse me, and help that motion by just moving them back and forth. Maybe give them a little pitter patter, get some blood going to the backs of the legs and the backs of the knees. Awesome, okay, so now we're going to come into, it's called reclined bound angle pose, which is Supta Baddha Konasana. That's the Sanskrit for um, reclined angle pose. So it's basically that bound angle pose your legs are in the same position where the soles of your feet come together and your knees open like a book. But supta, meaning supine, I'm guessing, um, which means on your spine. So that means rolling down to your back and maybe grabbing those pillows that I spoke about at the beginning of class and putting them underneath your back or putting them underneath your knees to give them some support. All right. 
So this Supta Baddha Konasana. Your feet are, the soles of your feet are together, your knees are open like a book, and then you can lean on back. Oh, and just let gravity do the work. And that's, uh, this is one of my favorite hip openers, especially for the beginning of class, because it's nice and gravity induced, right? There's a lot of weight and gravity that is pulling, that are pulling the knees down toward the ground, right? So once again, putting a prop underneath the outside edge of the knee to give it a little bit of support is definitely an okay thing, especially if it feels like it's too much of a pull on the front of the pelvis. If you want to go ahead and take your hands and palpate that area right now, reaching to, it's like a little like bony, pointy part of the front of your hip. So this is the area that's really the focus of today's class. This is called your ASIS, your anterior superior iliac spine. Um, and what this is, is it's the front of the pelvis, it's a bony prominence where the iliofemoral tendon attaches. And that's a fancy word for saying it's a quadricep tendon. It's a very special tendon because, um, well it's a special muscle period, the rectus femoris, is the top of the quads. So, that iliofemoral tendon attaches over the hip and then goes all the way, you know, it, it encases so to speak, it encases the rectus femoris muscle and then goes all the way down and around the entire knee and attaches right on the top of your shin at your uh, tibial tuberosity or your tib tub, technical term. So, yes, much vocabulary again. Are you breathing? Your knees are open wide. This can become a very intense stretch, so if you ever need to come out of it, please do by taking the hands to the outside edges of the knees and then close them like a book, using your hands to push the knees back up together. Everyone do that. Let's all come out of this and then go ahead and heel toe your feet past hip distance so the pinky side of your foot is at the outer edge of the mat and let your knees knock together. This is a wonderful counter stretch. So just allowing that uh, front part of your pelvis that was so hyper it was like almost like a hyperextension for the hip joint there. So just allowing this to kind of relax, coming back into your breath, maybe feeling that front of the pelvis soften a little bit. Heel toe your feet back in, then walk your heels in towards your glutes. Bring your arms down along your sides as if you could touch the back of your heels with your fingertips. That's how close you want your heels to your glutes. And then on an inhale, Lift the pelvis up. If you want to grab your pillow right now and slide that underneath the small of your back, that's a great place to put a prop right now. You can roll your shoulders underneath your chest and, and grab a bind at the small of your back. Your hands are on the floor, palms are touching. Or you can just have your hands down at your sides, the palms facing down. Wherever you are right now, make sure you're squeezing the knees together as if there was an imaginary block between them. This is firing up the quads big time right now, yeah? With every inhale, you lift the, the hips up a little bit taller toward the ceiling. And with every exhale, you relax the glutes. You're probably clenching those, those back hip muscles, right? So with every exhale, you soften those. And maybe you lose an, a, like a little milli inch, right? So on that next inhale, you raise up through the core and the quads. Those are the muscle groups that are lifting your pelvis here. And then with your exhale, you soften the glutes and the backs of the hips. To come out of this, come up to your tippy toes, roll your arms up to frame the head, and then exhale, lowering each vertebrae back down until your hips are back down on the mat. Bring your hands down back by your sides and lower the heels. So that's called bridge pose. And um, bridge pose, actually, I'm doing a 12-minute mini lesson on uh, the proper alignment of bridge. So we can definitely, you know, we'll go over that more. Actually, it's tomorrow at noon. So that'll be fun. So that's bridge pose. And once again, getting into the fronts of the hips there. So your hips are back on the ground. Your arms are down along your sides. On an inhale, bring the knees into the chest. Give them a hug. Roll around in little circles. Massage the back of the, uh, of the, the low back and the bottom of the spine. Yeah? We'll come and do a couple of twists here to get into that, up, uh, that mid back muscle we were talking about to help you guys breathe a little bit easier. So go ahead and take your arms out in the capital T off of the mat with the palms facing down and then go ahead and lower the legs over to the left, both knees over to the left. You're coming into this supine twist, a low back twist. 
And you can look out over your right arm if that's comfortable for your neck. And just breathing into this twist, noticing where you're feeling it in your body right now. If it's in your low back, if it's in your outer right hip, maybe it's up in that mid back range again. Every inhale gets a little bit bigger, feeling that rib cage expand in the twist, which is a very interesting feeling because the body is contorted right now, right? It's twisted. It's important to keep breathing here, even though it feels like it might be a little bit harder to breathe. On your next inhale, bring the knees back up through center, using the core to come back up, and then exhale, bring both the knees over to the right side. You can look out over the left shoulder, if that's comfortable for your neck. Try to soften that left shoulder into the mat a little bit more if you notice that there's space underneath the shoulder blade in between the shoulder blade and the mat. Right now I can absolutely feel this more in my, uh, in my left chest muscle than in my low back which means that my, uh, my chest and my shoulders are really tight. All right, on an inhale, bring those knees back up through center, roll back and forth, and then come up to a seated position. All righty then. Cool, okay, so now we're a little bit warmed up. Let's get into some more, um, some lunges. I've been craving lunges all day. I'm excited to do them with you. So, um, as of right now, you're uh, up in like a seated position. Go ahead and come around to tabletop position. And before we get into these lunges, we'll do just a little bit of activating the core just to make sure that you're tuning into that as well. So, in this tabletop position, your knees are underneath your shoulders, your wrists are stacked directly under your shoulders. Instead of looking directly down in between your hands, pick a spot a couple of inches out in front of your fingertips on the mat, or maybe it's the very top edge of your mat, depending on how close you are to it. So we're going to try to really tune into that front hip area that I've been talking about by using the core. Okay. So on an inhale, raise the right leg behind you and the left arm out in front of you. Flex through all five fingers. If you're going to shake someone's hand, and stay really flexed. Focus on that internal rotation of the back leg, meaning you point the toes and the knee down toward the ground. They're not pointing out to the side. You want them pointed down. And get tall through the core. Suck that in and engage through that core. So now, in order to feel the front of your hip, the front of the right hip, because the right leg is extended, right? really flexing through that back heel as if you could put a footprint on the wall behind you. Sending energy out through that heel livens up that front right hip for me personally. On an exhale, let's lower both of those down to the mat. Let's come into that on the other side. Really flexing through the heel to feel the activation and the stretch in the front of the left hip. So on an inhale, raise the left leg up behind you. Right arm comes out forward like you're going to shake my hand. Inhale, bring the navel in toward the spine, suck it up. As if you're getting your picture taken, right? Now focus on the ankle. Push the heel back and it stretches the entire leg. It's really, really wonderful actually how much that energetic cue can fire up different parts of your body. One more deep inhale through that core, suck it in like you're on the beach and there's someone cute walking by. And then exhale, lower it all back down to the mat. Let's come into the spine a little bit more just to wake that up and get moving and get the breath uh, flowing a little bit more freely through the thoracic spine area. Okay? On an inhale, lift the heart, tip the tailbone up. Exhale, push the mat away from you, round through the spine, bring the chin into the chest. Inhale. Lower the belly, lift the heart, and then exhale. Push the mat away from you, seal your hand to the mat, round through the spine. Inhale, come back up, lift, spread through the collarbones, look up maybe. Ooh, and then exhale, push the mat away from you, round through the spine. Drawing the belly button up toward the spine. So continue this to your own breath. And just see what different sensations you can get in the body. Maybe you pause at the top of your inhale. 
Maybe you stay in one pose for a full inhale and exhale, and then come back to linking your breath to movement with the proper exhale to round the spine and inhale to lift the heart, right? So pausing wherever you want, maybe this organically comes into C curves where you look over one side of your body toward the toes and then inhaling back through center and then exhaling over to the other side. Maybe you're now making circles with your hips, pulling yourself forward and then exhale to lower the hips down over the ankles, making big circles. Whatever you need right now, just to bring some organic movement and synchronizing the breath to those movements is super important, right? The literal definition of a vinyasa is um, it's a structured set of movements that is linked to your breath, it's synchronized to your breath. So we'll get into a couple of vinyasas in a little bit here just to build a little bit of heat and then we'll really get into those lunges, yeah? All right, so come back to stillness wherever this organic movement has led you. All right, let's tuck those toes. Bring the hands out like a whole, so wherever your hands are right now, bring them forward like a whole handprint, okay? So you're tucking those toes, your hands are a little bit farther forward, and then you lift the hips, extending the legs up. Coming into this down dog. If this bothers your wrists, there's a couple of different things that you can do. You can steal, seal your entire hand to the mat, which means pouring weight into the index and the thumb. So that takes a little bit of the pressure off of your wrists. And if that's still too much for you, you can always lower down to forearms, which is dolphin pose. So in this down dog, you can pedal out your feet, or you can stay in stillness and breathe into the sensations that you're feeling in this down dog. Okay. So. An inhale, look between your hands. Exhale, glide forward to upper push-up position. Wrists are under your shoulders. Your heels are stacked right over your toes. Once again, pushing the energy out back through the heels, but not losing the integrity of stacking the heels over the toes. On an exhale, bend the elbows in toward the side bodies, lower all of the way down, untuck the toes when you arrive. Inhale up for a little baby cobra, and then exhale, release. Tuck the toes, push up through hands and knees or through plank, and then come right back to down dog. On an inhale, look between your hands. Exhale, step, walk, or jump, feet to hands. You inhale up for a halfway lift, and then exhale, release. Inhale, come all the way up, sweep the arms up. Let's get into some side body stretching here. So grab the left wrist with the right hand, and then exhale over to the right. Inhale, back up through center, switch your grip. Exhale, over to the left. Inhale, back up through center, release the hands, spread them wide, and swan dive right over both of your legs. In this forward fold, you inhale up for that halfway lift. And then exhale to release. Plant the hands, step it back to upper push-up position. Hold this upper push-up position. You can always lower your knees down in this upper push-up position, this plank pose, right? You can always lower the knees down and untuck the toes. If you do that, make sure you're still sending the heart forward. You don't just want to be coming back into a tabletop, right? You're still sending the front body forward. So you're engaging that core, right? That's what we want here. So whether your knees are up or down, it's about the core, right? On your next exhale, bend. The elbows in toward the side bodies, lower down to the mat, untuck the toes when you arrive. Inhale up for that little baby cobra. Exhale, release. Tuck the toes, push up through hands and knees or through, um, or through plank and go back, go back right to down dog. So that flow, that movement of plank, lowering down, up for cobra, and then back to down dog, that is literally a vinyasa. Um, and you'll hear teachers cue flow through your vinyasa or you can take a vinyasa it's kind of like a rinse off it's just a nice like constant uh synchronization and a um uh what's the word i'm looking for oh my goodness sequence it's a uh, it's a steady sequence that you can find in almost any yoga flow class it's pretty very very common so 
You're all in this down dog right now. Let's come back into our hips a little bit, but this time we'll come into the outer hips. So to do that, we're gonna come into child's pose. So you're going to lower your knees to the mat, take them nice and wide to the outer edges, big toes to touch, and then lower the hips down over the ankles. The arms come out long in front of you toward the top of your mat, and you can surrender the forehead to the earth or put a pillow under your forehead to support your neck. Just feeling the weight of your hips over your ankles, working those outer hips a little bit. It's a nice passive stretch once again, letting gravity do the work. As you inhale through the nose, maybe you feel the belly rise and maybe it touches the tops of the thighs, those quads that we're getting into so much. The cool thing about working the quads is that when you work the hips, you're also working the quads and the hamstrings at the same time usually. Um, it's really cool. You're kind of um, killing two birds at once. Uh, pardon the expression. Um, but... Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's really fascinating because muscles pull, they never push. So every time they get super duper tight, um, what happens is when they get tight, they're pulling on other areas of your body, which is why it's really important to have a full body stretch practice of some kind that you do on a daily basis to keep all of that tightness and those crippling, debilitating postures of getting stiff and stuck. You really want to keep those at bay, right? So stretching is really the only way to do that. So if you are someone who finds yourself constantly complaining about feeling stiff and stuck, this is the, this is the regimen for you. Yoga and gentle stretching and mindful movement are definitely the way to tune into those and to see what exactly is going on in your body and how you can fix it. And once again, if you have any questions about your own practice and your own body, you can uh, message me and we can talk about ways that yoga and stretching can address the issues that you have going on in your own body. So you're still in this child's pose. Let's come on out of it. Inhale, come up, pull forward. Bring the knees back in under your hip points. Tuck the toes, lift the hips, send them on back. Coming back into down dog. All right, let's stretch the front of that hip coming into a three-legged dog. On an inhale, raise the right leg up behind you. Bend the knee, open the hips, stacking the hips. Just kind of twist the hips out toward the side of the mat. Staying nice and flexed through that right ankle. Look in between your hands on an inhale. And then exhale, swing that whole leg right on through, up in between your hands. Lower the back, left knee down, and untuck the toes. Once you have this base, you inhale, rise up, stacking the shoulders over the hips. Maybe the arms are framing the head. You can lower them down to cactus. Just stay nice and open across the chest. If you want more of a chest opener here, you can take the hands to the small of the back. So as you're coming into a bind. Take a look down at your front right knee. Make sure the knee is stacked directly over the ankle in a nice 90 degree angle. Make sure the knee isn't caving in or winging out over the side. All right, so from here, whether your hands are in the bind or not, or if they're in cactus or if they're up framing your head, maybe look up, do a little mini back bend here. And as you come into this little mini back bend in this um, modified crescent, this lunge here, as you look up and do the back bend, you're actually pouring more weight into the front right knee, which then will stretch the front of that left hip that we were talking about, right? So if you even want to take your hands to your hips at this time, that's a cool thing to feel. And to really bring your attention to the front of your hips, the left hip specifically, that is getting so stretched by this gravity-induced passive stretch. All of your weight and the gravity is going right into that front left hip flexor, okay? Okay. If you're still looking up, bring your neck back to neutral and make sure that you're not really pushing that knee too far forward over your, your toes. You want it to stay stacked above the ankle, right? If this is too much on your back left knee, you can always roll your mat over from the side and give yourself a little bit more cushion. My knees are really sensitive, so I often do that when I'm in class or if you have a, a blanket or something, you can always use that too. 
You can even tuck the back toes if you want more sensation in the back left leg. All right, so let's everyone inhale the arms up to frame the head, lower the hands down to frame the front foot. You can undo that mat if you folded it. And what you're going to do is come, we're going to come into a runner's lunge together. So you're going to lower the hips back over the ankle, just like in child's pose, which then causes your right leg to extend and straighten. And then you flex through that front right ankle, right? As if we put that footprint on the, on the wall in front of you. If you need blocks or pillows right now to stay up, if you can't get super down low, which not a lot of people can, that's absolutely fine. Some people might be here. They might be, um, they might be pretty tall in this runner's lunge, which is fine. Props will help you whether they're pillows or blocks. Or books. Books. Yep, books are fine too. Wherever you are here, it is super important to breathe. This is a very, very, very intense back of the leg stretch, getting into the hamstring, which will then release some of the tension in your outer right hip. So let's flow through a couple, um, a couple movements here, linking your breath to the movement. On an inhale, re-bend the right knee, come forward, rise up at the top of your inhale, you exhale, and then go to frame the front foot with your hands and extend the hips back, straightening the right leg, flexing the right ankle. So you're gonna flow through this to your own breath, inhaling to rise, exhale, frame and extend. Again, inhale, re-bend, rise, exhale, frame and extend. And you can do that as slowly or as quickly as you want. You can, it can be really flowy and quick, or it can be very slow and deliberate. Maybe you pause at the top of the inhale and exhale fully. Relax the shoulders away from the ears. Feel the front hip stretch before you inhale to get tall to the head and then exhale, frame and extend. If this is creating any kind of sensation in the back of your knee, like it just did for me, go slowly. There is no rush. This is all about what you can feel right now in your body. What is new? Keeps you curious, right? Wherever you are in this movement, come back to risen. So your shoulders are stacked over your hips and you're up tall, right? Cartwheel the hands down to frame that front foot. Tuck the back toes. Lift the back knee up off of the ground. Make sure that you're still maintaining that 90 degree angle. Knee is stacked over the right ankle, right? The right knee is stacked over the right ankle. On an inhale, let's bring the left leg all the way up to the top of the mat. So it meets the right, yeah? Now you're back in that forward fold at the top of your mat. Inhale up for a halfway lift, pause. Nice flat back. And then exhale to release. Inhale, come all the way up, sweep the arms up. Bring the hands down through heart center and forward fold once again. Inhale up for a halfway lift. Exhale, release. Plant the hands, step it back to upper push up position. You can flow through a vinyasa or just push your hips right back to down dog. And I don't know about you, but even just those slight uh, inhaling up for a halfway lift and forward fold, my right leg feels so much different than my left. And maybe now you're all back in that down dog. Maybe you can actually feel the difference between your two sides, between the two legs. One might feel longer than the other. That's what we're looking for, right? That elongation feel. All right, so let's do that all on the left side now, okay? So on an inhale, raise the left leg up to hip height, bend at the knee, open the hips, stacking the hips. On an inhale, look between your hands, exhale, sweep the left foot right on through. Lower the back right knee down and then untuck the toes. Before we get started, if you need to roll over that mat for a little extra cushion for your right knee, go for it, okay? You can tuck those back toes too if you want. If you uh, tuck the back toes, it brings more sensation to the front of the right hip, which we're about to stretch here on this, on this side, right? All right, so you're up. Shoulders stacked over, whether your hands are down at cactus or if they are behind you. And this nice bind again to open up your chest. Look up, little baby back bend. Release the hands from wherever they are, bring them down to frame the front foot. And then extend the left leg long, flex the left ankle. On an inhale, re-bend through the left knee, rise back up. 
and exhale. Bring the hands down to frame the left foot and extend the left leg long. Hips go down over the right ankle. So once again, flowing into this to your own breath. Getting curious about where you're feeling it the most. Maybe pausing and sending more weight forward into that left knee and really feeling the weight of your body stretch out that front right hip. And then as you exhale, go ahead. Extend the left leg long. Inhale, come back up. Exhale, rebend. My knees are so sensitive. And flowing through this to your own breath, taking it as slowly or as quickly as you need. Okay. Wherever you are, come back up, stacking the shoulders over the hips. Bring the hands down to frame that front left foot. Tuck the back toes, come up off of the back right knee. On an inhale, bring the right leg all the way forward to meet the left at the top of the mat. You're back in that forward fold. Inhale up for a halfway lift. Exhale, release. Inhale, come all the way up. Bring the hands right down through heart center. Forward fold again. Inhale up for that halfway lift. And then exhale, release. Plant the hands, step it back through upper push-up position. Maybe you hold plank to build some heat. Use some core, bring that belly button right up toward the spine. Maybe you don't, and you flow through your vinyasa, lowering down on an exhale, inhaling up for a little baby cobra, and then exhale, pushing the hips back for down dog. All righty then. So now we're all back in this down dog together. On an inhale, look between your hands. Exhale, step walk or jump, both feet up in between your hands. Heel toe the feet out past hip distance. The toes can point out toward the outer edges, so they're kind of pointed away from each other. They're not parallel pointing forward, kind of pointed out at an angle. Slowly bend your knees, lower the hips as deep as you can. This is called Malasana Squat. If your body is stopping about halfway, and you can still do this pose, it's called Huddle Pose, instead of getting your hips all the way down, because some people can't get their hips all the way down. That's just the way it is. Everybody's body is different, right? So if you stop about here and this is enough for you, that's fine. You just have to make sure you're pushing your elbows into your knees and drawing your knees in toward the midline at the same time. And you lower all of the way down, if you can, for a full Malasana squat. So once again, when you're pushing your elbows into your knees and bringing the knees in toward the midline, you get nice and tall through the crown of the head, right? Okay, so go ahead. Lower your fingertips down wherever you are. If your hips are lifted or if your hips are all the way down, lower your fingertips toward the ground. And what we're going to do is we're going to come into a little bit of core action here, right? This will be fun. Um, so you're going to just kind of fall right back and lift your legs. <laughs> if not, and if you need a moment to just kind of like reconfigure now that we're back on the ground, that's fine. Lift those feet. Lift one and the other. Or maybe you just practice one at a time. You know, whatever floats your boat. Because this is called Navasana, a boat pose. <laughs> <laughs> so, in your boat pose here, your hands can be underneath your knees to help support your legs, or they can be parallel out with your legs. The higher up your arms go, the more intense this is on your abs. This is an ab workout, and since our hip flexors, that front hip area that we've been talking about all class, since it's such a strong muscle, it initiates every step you take. So it's a very, very strong muscle group. So. Um, in order to really make sure that your abs are doing the work here and not your hip flexors, you open your feet. Make a little Y with them, okay? And you can practice closing the feet and opening the feet, closing the feet and opening the feet. Continue to breathe here very deeply through the core. Stay nice and open across the chest. And feel the difference 
between your feet closed and your feet open. You'll feel it. It's crazy. You'll be shaking. It's, we call that affectionately the chihuahua shake. So embrace that. Because the longer I keep you here, the more you're going to hate me, right? <laughs> One more deep inhale, get really tall, maybe a little bit taller, and then exhale, release the feet, bring the hands down behind you, fingertips pointed toward your glutes, and then inhale, lift up, relax the neck back for this reverse tabletop. Slowly lower the hips all the way down to the mat. Let's come into that one more time, shall we? So, you can bring your hands to your knees, roll around on your sit bones, that bony part of your butt that hits the floor. You definitely feel it's not the most comfortable. And then you lift one leg up and then the other. Open your feet. Maybe practice opening and closing a couple more times to really activate that core. Just to really try to feel that within your body. It's a fascinating change. And if you can't feel it, that's fine. You're still using it. <laughs> it's still working, especially if you're shaking. Keep breathing. Make that breath really audible. As if you were Darth Vader. Those deep inhales, and then a strong exhale. I definitely miss that about being in a room full of people is hearing the breath. It's crazy. I never thought I would miss that, but I do for sure. All right. One more deep inhale. Get really tall through this whole pose here. Maybe lift the legs, lift the chest. Exhale, release everything. Lower the feet. Hands come behind you, fingertips pointed toward your hips. And you inhale, lift up, relax the neck back. Slowly on the exhale, lower the hips all the way down to the mat. Bring the legs out nice and long. Stay nice and flexed through both feet here. Inhale, both arms up to frame the head. And then exhale, bow forward. We're coming back into that seated forward fold here, which uh, may have been very, very difficult at the beginning of class. Hopefully there's a little bit more ease here. It's not a very comfortable position. It's still hard to breathe. It's a full posterior body stretch. So your entire, your back, back of your neck, upper back, mid back, lower back, hips, hamstrings, and calves, and feet. They're all getting a beautiful stretch right now. So hopefully you're finding a little bit more ease here. If not, keep breathing. It doesn't matter. You're still working. Wherever your hands are, release them and inhale, rise back up, stacking the shoulders over the hips. Let's come back into Baddha Konasana, that bound angle pose from the beginning of class. Once again, we're just going back over all of these so you can feel the difference in your body now. So bring the soles of the feet together, let the knees open like a book, you interlace your hands, bring them around the toes, and you get nice and tall. Really use your hands as an anchor and just lift up and away, maybe even relaxing the throat away if you want, if that's too much on the neck. Don't do it. This right here enough is, is enough for me that the tops of my shoulders are just positively borderline screaming. It's really intense. And we breathe. But the more you use your feet and your hands as an anchor, you can just really bring this beautiful, it's like a pin and stretch to your muscles because you're using your own weight as an anchor and you're lifting up and away. So it's really, really deeply stretching. Please keep breathing very deeply. And slowly go ahead, relax the tops of the shoulders, maybe give a little bit of a gentle bend to the elbows, kind of noodly arms here for a moment. All right, together, one deep inhale, get really tall to the crown of the head, and then exhale, bow forward, bringing the belly button to the toes, staying really flat in your back, no rounding through the shoulders, staying open across the chest and the heart, spreading the collarbones wide. Go ahead, relax that, and then inhale, rise back up. Release the feet. Take the legs out nice and long in front of you. Give them a little pitter-patter. And then go ahead and roll down. So you're coming back down. So you're laying back down on the mat. So we have to do that laying down bound angle pose, right? Supta Baddha Konasana. So coming into that means you're laying down on your backs and your big, your, uh, excuse me, your, uh, the soles of your feet come to touch and your knees open like a book. Once again, if you need a prop underneath the outer edge of the knees, that's totally fine. And just feeling the difference now compared to the very beginning of class.
maybe you notice that your knees are actually open wider than they were at the beginning of class. Or maybe there just isn't as much sensation because you're more open now. There's blood flowing freely, bringing new nutrients and oxygen to all those super tired and fatigued and sore and stiff muscles. Okay. To come out of this, bring your hands to the outside edge of your knees and then close them like a book using your hands to push your knees up together. Heel toe the feet out to the outer edges of the mat and let the knees knock together. Your eyes can gently close if you'd like. We're winding down now here. If you need anything else to complete your practice at this time, like a happy baby or more supine twists, you absolutely may do so now. If you'd like to leave your legs like this with uh, your feet out at the outer edges and the knees knocked together, if that's nice for your low back, then please stay there. If you wanna put a pillow underneath your knees, that's also being really nice to your low back. And I highly recommend that too. So you have a couple of different options. Or, excuse me, the full Shavasana would be legs extended with nothing underneath them. But if you ever have any like um, low back tightness from laying on the ground, that's because the backs of your legs are tight. So supporting them with the pillow is key. It's a great way to kind of teach yourself to sleep. So coming into this Shavasana, together take a deep breath in and a long sigh out. Check in with the jaw, bring the tip of the tongue away from the roof of the mouth. And on your next exhale, relax the space between the eyes, let that melt. We furrow our brow so much during the day. Just let that space in between the eyes just melt away. So this is a period of silence. I will bring you out of it when we are done with my voice. Enjoy.
together, take a deep breath in. And a long sigh out. If you would like to stay laying down, you can. Uh, or you can slowly roll over to your right side and push yourself up to a seated position. We're coming into a little bit of meditation for the end of class, just to check in with your brains and to remind you all that you do have control over them. This is a practice, this is not something that is easy or that comes to you overnight. So it's nice to sprinkle it in with our classes. So if you're laying down, if you'd like to bring one hand to your heart, one hand to your stomach, you may absolutely do absolutely do that. If you're sitting up, um, hopefully you can grab like a pillow or something to put underneath your uh, your hips, so your hips are elevated above your knees. That allows you to sit nice and stacked without straining physically. Once again, you can take one hand to your heart, one hand to your stomach. Hands can be on your thighs with palms up or palms down. Your eyes can be closed or they can be very gently staring at something in the distance. Check in with the jaw, bring the tip of the tongue away from the roof of the mouth. It always finds its way back up there. And breathe. Relax the shoulders away from the ears. And feel your belly inhale and exhale. If your mind wanders away, bring it back to noticing your inhales and exhales. Bring it back to noticing different sensations in your body, different feelings physically. Or listen to the sounds around you. If the sounds around you are annoying you, let that go like a cloud drifting away. Come back to your breath. Together, take a breath in and a long sigh out the mouth. <sighs> Wherever you are, bring both hands to your chest and on an inhale, feel how large and spacious, your chest becomes filling with breath. As you exhale, 
feeling the weight of your hands sink into your chest as it lowers on the exhale. Just feeling the weight of your hands. And even if you're giving your attention to only the weight of your hands, that's a meditation in and of itself. It doesn't cost you a penny. Taking the time to notice the connection and the weight and the way it feels. It's a great way of learning to calm your breath and your mind. If you're ever feeling super duper anxious, this is the perfect practice to come to. Sitting with those feelings, breathing through it, acknowledging that you're feeling them, but then also acknowledging that you have the power to redirect your energy. Wherever you are, sitting up or laying down, tuck your chin in toward your chest a little bit, bringing your head to your heart and your heart to your head, bringing the two closer together. The light and the truth in me sees that and honors it in each of you. Namaste, everyone. <laughs>